been limited a little bit of indoor. It's been three weeks since we've competed because of the weather. We, but uh, we're going to brave the weather this week, drive up through West Virginia and go to Akron, Ohio for a big meet with uh, Akron, Michigan, Ohio State, a lot of good teams. And uh, we've got conference in two weeks. At the end of February, our conference indoor championship. We're very excited. Everybody seems to be reasonably healthy. You know, knock wood that everybody would perform well. My goal with indoor is to have everybody healthy going into outdoor when we drop the volume, increase the intensity with all our athletes and get ready for those faster times with the warmer weather. So that transition seems to be good. We are, we'll lose, obviously, Travis Coleman, the defending outdoor champion. He will not compete outdoor, he'll compete indoor. But other than that, we look to be a very, very good team, especially with our men's throws. We look to be a very, very good team at the conference level outdoor. Uh, you know, any time that you can get a national ranking, I think that's important. That's something that we've built our program on over the last uh, 17 years that I've been here. You've been lucky enough to have had probably about five or six runners finish in the top 20 at the end of the, that NCAA year, with one of them being named All-American. Any time you can finish in that top 20, top 25, you have a position to be among the best in the country. And getting your name out, recognition with the university, recognition with the program I, is huge in any capacity. And Ashley Howard, uh, her performances in the throws, I think will parlay into an unbelievable spring. We redshirted her last year with her knee surgery, patella tendon knee surgery, and, and she's doing so well right now that uh, indoors, she's kind of surprising us that we're very excited when she goes to her outdoor discipline of the discus. And uh, Adam Friedenthal, I know, in the 5,000 meters. Adam, Adam Friedenthal, has, this is his sophomore year. He transferred from Presbyterian, had to sit out a year, uh, has done nothing but run personal record after personal record every time he steps on the track, kind of following the pattern of another uh, Presbyterian transfer, Matt Elliott, who's NCAA qualifier for us, and he's doing very, very well. And Carrie Phillips is just continuing the great year that she had last year when she was all conference in indoor, outdoor, and cross country. So those two have, they're not surprising me as much as they're, they're really getting stronger the way I felt they would. Looking at the season coming up so far, it looks like throws are really the strength of the program right now. How the, is that? The, they are. And I was asked that question by the Johnsonian last week. Facilities. I think to build the facilities that we had five years ago or four years ago, to build the track facilities, show that we are able to get stronger in every capacity. We've had a great record with sprints over the years, great record with distance runners, and to finally have those throws facilities, we were able to bring in a, a group of top-notch throwers about three or four years ago, led by Ashley Howard. She's always, obviously one of the best discus throwers in the country. We were very excited about her senior campaign. Jared Barrett, who finished fourth in the Canada Games, looks to be a, among the top ten javelin throwers in the United States. And, and Travis Coleman, defending conference champion in the shot, this indoor season will challenge again for that shot title. We're going to be redshirting him outdoor to get his uh, wrist better, and hopefully next year he'll be following the suit that, that Jared and Ashley have led. Distance obviously seems to be the next. Strongest yeah, they're category. so they're so young. Um, Women-wise, uh, Carrie Phillips is continuing the campaign she had last year when she became only the second Winthrop uh, athlete to make all conference in all three disciplines: indoor, cross country, and outdoor. And uh, Carly Moss, who pushed her, Carly Moss, who actually set school records and beat Carrie last year. Struggling a little bit with a, a form of malaria she picked up while teaching abroad, just a, a rough stretch, but looks to be rounding back into shape. And those two, a couple with Lisa Sickman, who was all conference last year in the outdoor 1500, look very strong. And the men, young, we talked about Adam Frudenthal, AJ Fitzsimmons, who was a South Carolina state champion, coming in as a freshman, already producing. We're very excited about that group. Sprints have historically been a strong point for your team. Yeah. How are they looking? Good, young. Um, we've got a couple of transfers, uh, Mardavia Lynch from Baylor, Latasha Watson from Lehigh. They're going to immediately come in and, and add a much-needed impact. We have Sasha Robinson back, who looks to be one of the top 400-meter runners in the conference. She set out last year with a broken foot and is really rounding into shape. And Rebecca Holmes, who is positioned herself as one of the top hurdlers in the Southeast United States, can challenge for that conference title and possibly an NCAA position. What about the jumps? Jumps are young. We've got a group of high jumpers back. Uh, on the men's side, Dexter uh, Young running, jumping real well, Tony Moten and Frederick Williams. Both, all three, I think we're looking at sophomore, freshman, freshman, very young group. Uh, Tara Bowman is a junior in pole vaulting. No, sophomore in pole vault, excuse me. She was fourth in conference last year. She's looking really strong. So that group, a lot better. Uh, Carrie Sims, our senior, who is also a male sprinter, he looks to challenge and become a, possibly a 50-foot triple jumper, which will position him well in the NCAA regionals. Um, talk about the 
facility. I know when you got here, you're the only track coach that we've ever had here at Winthrop. Mm -hmm. When you got here, I know the facilities were less than what you would want them to be. And now with the new track and everything, how has that helped sort of jump the program? Yeah, I was asked that question last week. Um, a lot, I, maybe not in terms of that top, you know, we've always had great athletes here. I think the university sold itself. We were able, always able to get great people here, even when we were training at Sullivan Middle School or, or Saluda Trail Middle School. But we are always hovering around maybe 15, 16 men, 15, 16 women. So you're talking about 32 to 35 athletes on your team. Now we're somewhere around 65 to 70 athletes. So that has attracted a much higher element Obviously, the throws which we just shared, not having throws facilities, going to some of the best throws facilities in the country, which we have now, has attracted some of the top-notch throwers. So across the board, it has really jump-started the number, the number game, which is what's needed to be able to contend for a conference title. If you have been stuck in the middle of the pack, then that's not a bad thing because in terms of financially, I don't know if we'll ever quite catch the Liberties or Coastals. Obviously, with football programs, they get, they get football players, and to counteract football, they have a great deal of funding on the women's side for, for gender equity issues. But what we do, and I, st I, I go back to just two years ago when we, there were only uh, roughly in the NCAA, there's 379 Division I track and field teams. About 85 to 90 get somebody to an NCAA championship. About 45 of those teams get more than one person to an NCAA championship. We are one of those 45 teams getting our high jump and our 1500 meter runner. So we still got the focus on being able to get our people up to the national level. And I think we're doing a good job with that. I, I believe this year we have a potential to put two people into the top 10 in the NCAA with, with Jared and uh, Jared Baird, our javelin thrower, and Ashley Howard, our discus thrower. That is huge, being, being able to sleep in your own bed. Um, I've always said the hardest thing in coaching is, is not recruiting. It's not the coaching, it's trying to feed 60 college kids in a college town on a, on a Friday night. And there are no restaurants in places like Clemson, you're having to find a hamburger place to feed people. But to be able to have your own facility, to be able to, to now have that interaction with professors, parents, students, uh, fellow students being able to come out to the meets. Uh, Four years ago, we started the A6 Winthrop Invitational. Um, we had something like 17 teams. We've grown to almost 30 teams. That's the last weekend in March. We have gone from something like having eight NCAA qualifiers to having 27 NCAA qualifiers from all those teams at that meet. This year, we're doing something different. We're still going to have the A6 Invitational. Uh, we've currently got commitments from UNC Wilmington, Rutgers, who's nationally ranked, Lehigh, a, a lot of good northern programs. But we are also having a second meet on Friday, April 9th, a streamlined two and a half hour track meet called the Carolinas Cup. And that is going to be four teams, wait, uh, excuse me, Western Carolina, Appalachian State, Gardner Webb, and ourselves. You're allowed two entries per event, and we're going to do a meet in two and a half hours under the lights. The fans, it's going to be a great chance to come out and just watch those meets. For people to cheer, you're going to have a scored meet, a trophy presentation, whereas most of our track meets are invitationals. There's not really a score, so there'll be some identity with that type of situation. For people, I mean, you're from 30 teams and 2,000 athletes here for our invitational. Two 12-hour days running multiple heats of, let's say, I think, was it last year we had something like 16 heats of the men's 400. Um, so you're at 16 times 8, that's something like 148, 118 people in the, in, the, in the 400. You just keep running and running to try to get to who's the fastest. This is a lot better situation with a streamlined meet. You can bring a family, come out and grab a hot dog, sit up in the stands and watch Two people from Winthrop, two people from Western, two people from App, two people from Gardner-Webb. Eight people, one heat. At the end of it, we got to score with it. And I think that's the evolution of track and field. We're trying to bring the fans back in. You do need those invitationals because you've got to go to bigger meets to run fast times. But that head-to-head, -head, I think, will also generate interest with the layperson.